Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman from Islamabad Studios. Today we'll be looking at the overall economic situation of Pakistan. As we all know that the IMF delegation was in Pakistan. Dr. Abdul Hafiz Sheikh negotiated with them. He's the advisor to the Prime Minister on Economic Affairs. And eventually the deal is that we'll be getting around $6 billion for three years on a very minimal uh, interest rate. So that is uh, good news, but at the same time, obviously, uh, the when you talk about the IMF, International Monetary Fund, or for that matter, any other financial institutions, whenever they lend you money, they make a plan for you that this is how you're going to give it back or repay. When they talk about increasing the tax base, this is what the government wants, this is what everybody wants, I would say. When you talk about uh, increasing the fiscal space or tightening the monetary policy or uh, curbing the inflation or collecting uh, proper uh, bills, uh, utility bills, uh, from the people and making sure that there should be no leakages in that. Uh, you talk about other programs for that matter in which you get a lot of help from these uh, monetary institutions. But interestingly, now this is all what we want to do. Now, what the deal is about IMF, I mean, it's very clear, it's very open. Things will uh, be a little tight in the next coming years. But having said that, if you play your cards wisely, appropriately and in a proper fashion that you should know what exactly is in front of you and how you are heading there, things would be fine. But since unfortunately whether you talk about the last uh, 13, 12, 13 uh, bailout packages or you talk about the overall IMF funding for the last 22 programs, uh, what we have done so far isn't that great. Unfortunately, whatever they have told us to do, we haven't been able to do. Even when you talk about this immensity scheme, for that matter, which the current government has introduced, in which uh, if you pay, you know, you declare and then you pay 4%, you declare uh, and then you can get away until either June 31st or even before that, September. Now, the interesting part is that when you talk about such immensity schemes, these are not much favoured by the uh, International Monetary uh, institutions for that matter in this particular case IMF because technically according to me or according to most of the people I mean this is the black money which is getting converted into white on such a little why should people pay taxes then this is something which is in direct conflict with the overall philosophy you talk about increasing the tax base you're leaving a huge sector out of the tax net so what's the point why to squeeze more which are already paying so there are there are a couple of questions you know, uh, related to it. Then you talk about need uh, for the pro-poor policies. The budget is around the corner, but uh, you talk about uh, poor, pro-poor policy. Look at the inflation. Look at the overall uh, situation. Today, the dollar went up. Last night, it was 146.25. Today, it has crossed 148. And these are not the predictions. When you talk about the open market policy or free flow of dollar, a, the dollar is not available. B, if it is, this is what is happening. 150 rupees almost. 50% increase during the last, uh, I still remember when the money was injected by the State Bank of Pakistan, around $3 billion within a span of six months. We controlled the dollar artificially, kept it under three digits. Now, it has crossed. So, you can well imagine what exactly is going on. Look at the way your, your uh, overall uh, debt has increased. So, so many other factors. Repayments, payments, but this is something which we need to look into. To talk about this, we have with us in our studio on my right is Abdul Ghafar Khadek Saab. He's a senior entrepreneur, senior economics. So thank you very much. And we have with us Sheikh Amir Wahid Saab, former president of Islamabad Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you very much, sir. And we'll be also talking to Sayyid uh, Mohibullah Shah Saab, uh, who is from the World Bank and is also an economist. But first question to you, Ghafar Khadek Saab, since you are directly into the business, do you understand the dynamics, what exactly is going on currently in Pakistan? Things are not great. Let's accept that. Uh, not only accepted by the current government, but a lot of other people that situation in Pakistan as far as the economy is concerned is very fluid. And it might get a little more worse, if you allow me to use this negative word worse, or maybe tighten, if you don't want to use that. But still, looking at the current scenario, let's start off from this, that uh, the immensity scheme, Amnesty scheme, basically, when you say that, uh, you know, you pay 4% or 6% or, and 2% you'll get cleared. Now, sir, last time when Nawaz Sharif Saab introduced this, I remember around 120 billion rupees were collected during his uh, government. The current government opposed it. Now, they have introduced this and they plan to fetch around 4 to 4 point, uh, sorry, 400 to 450 
uh, billion rupees. Now, sir, the target seems to be pretty over ambitious. Do you think this money will be collected eventually, sir? Or the other option is to print notes? According to the efficient market theory, market discounts information before anyone else. You have yourself mentioned that the dollar has already touched 148. That means that the package we are bringing into Pakistan with the IMF might not resolve all the issues that we do have. And secondly, the packages from the IMF generally are more like the life-saving drugs. So they can give you life, but never, never give you health. For health purposes, you have well to said. reform. For health purposes, you have to reform yourself. So the government has to bring reforms within the institutions so that we can stand on our own feet. With reference to the uh, figures that you mentioned, 120 billion at that time and 450 billion expectations now, uh, the IMF uh, with the government, there are two additional measures to that. The IMF has extended fund facility for $6 billion in 39 months. On the top of that, the government has to accomplish certain actionable plans before that. Yes. And number two, the commitment from the international financial providers. So that means World Bank, IMF, maybe Saudi Arabia, XYZ, from wherever we can get additional funds. The size which is included at the moment for fiscal discipline is 600 billion in additional tax revenue, 100 billion from high energy cost saving, and 280 billion rupees from privatization of two LNG plants. Now, if I work out this figure of 600 billion collection with 4% on average, because 1.5% is on immovable property, 6% is on sales, so on the average, let's take uh, a figure of 4%. This does require 15, 15 trillion rupees declaration of additional assets. 15 trillion? Trillion rupees, which is equivalent to almost 107 to 110 billion dollars. Now, bringing in that money into the tax net is not an issue. The issue effectively is, what is the level of trust of those who will declare these assets into the system? In 2007, Federal Reserve had a balance sheet of $468 billion. But hmm. due to the mortgages crisis, the trust deficit expanded the Federal Reserve had to expand its balance sheet to $4.3 uh, $4 trillion. Even then, it could not manage it. And see what happened, right? So things are not so simple. And that is the reason the market knows these under the efficient market theory. Triple A rated companies went bankrupt, bankrupt. within 24 hours. Yes. So therefore, however, the next thing is, are we in such a situation as you referred to, worst situation that nothing can happen? No. Back in 1995, there is a Turkish lira crisis. We have seen that. Absolutely. Back in 19, sorry, that was in 94. Back in 1995, Mexican peso in crisis. Back in 1997, Thai Baat was, was yeah, in crisis. Yeah, 2000, 1998, Russia was Ruble. in trouble. Ruble was in trouble. So, if they could make it back, we can also make it back. However, it does require reforms and true reforms. I still remember, sir, IMF was so reluctant to give, uh, you know, bailout packages even to Greece, even yes. to Argentina, if you remember. Yes, Peso Argentina was has so defaulted, down. actually. That's what I'm saying. But they had a plan and they managed. Over here, sir, yes. to be very honest, it seems that there is no plan. And this is just an ad hoc system who's working on day-to-day -day basis, taking day-to-day -day decisions. Yes. There is no medium-term planning and there is no long-term planning. I mean, this is exactly what you said earlier, that this is a life-saving drug. It can save your life, but it cannot cure you. So your take on the same point, since you've also been the uh, president of Islamabad Chamber and you know exactly what the, what are the sentiments of the businessmen, what exactly is brewing in the mind of the entrepreneur and how they are thinking, sir. 
first of all, uh, uh, trust is not very much high on the government side, government officials, because mm. uh, people, uh, when uh, this government was coming, everybody was uh, trusting them that they will do something for the country and for the uh, business community and for the people of Pakistan. But now, from last uh, nine, ten months, you are watching the, what are doing the things for, from the uh, 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 what 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 have done with our dollar, our gas prices has increased. But Sheikh Sab, wasn't this expected? Because Imran Khan Sab used to tell every time that the situation is not that great. We will be having a problem. Obviously, when you look at it from an opposition perspective, it's a different ball game. Yes. But once you are in the chair, in the driving seat. You see, oh, oh, hold on, things are not that simple. Look at the forex reserve and then you get to know what, what has been done in the past also. So maybe a lot of issues, Yes. but it seems that this is not going to be sorted out very, very soon. soon. This is going to continue, sir. And so it will take time. Mm -hmm. I, I know we, we should give them five years. In, in these five years, they will do something for the country. And I, we are very hopeful, business community is very hopeful from then that Imran Khan, Prime Minister of Pakistan will do something for the uh, business community and for the people of Pakistan. But there are so certain things which are to be uh, clarified and which are to be implemented in, uh, for the business community. First, you, you have seen that uh, there is one issue in uh, advanced income tax and other is withholding tax. Mm -hmm. These two taxes are poison for the business community because billions of uh, rupees are refundable uh, we are facing a lot of problems now we have we have to we are paying more than 14% bank interest rate for our uh, assets but it's not refunding so these are the things which which can be cured in near future uh, with immediate effects they, they, they should start like I, I say one thing that they should uh, 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 do 0.2% in uh, withholding tax, not 4%, uh, uh, because people, uh, small traders are not doing much business because they have a cap you know, when of the 50 overall million. economic activity slows down, yes. it affects everybody, whether yes. it's a big trader or it's a small businessman for that matter. So the effect is there, and obviously, when you talk about collection of the taxes, if the economic activity isn't there, maybe if you compare it with the uh, Last year, during the same time period, yes. maybe it is more, now, this time it is less. And plus, maybe there is a will, but so there are a lot of issues. And you rightly mentioned that the trust deficit between the tax collector and the business community, that's, that's widening. That's widening on almost daily basis. And the kind of authorities which have been given to those uh, individuals, that's a little too much. And on top, let's see what uh, Shabar Sahib does now. He himself is a businessman. He understands he's been a member of so many committees in this tax collection uh, area and is also an exporter. So he understands yes. that what are the issues what of the are tax the ground realities? Exactly, yes. the nerve the basically, the pulse. Realities. Exactly. What's going on for the uh, for exporters, especially for exporters? For exporters, because, yes. Because uh, dollar is not staying at the price. Uh, most of things we are importing for export. If you like remember, sir, we used to talk about that the dollar could go up to 160 to 165. This is what the IMF wants. Yes. Well, IMF wants it to be a free uh, yeah. currency. Like yes. let it, let the market forces decide. Yes. That's let the important the part. Yes. So there is no point that it shouldn't go to 160 or 165 level. Anyway, let's see. Uh, we have been joined in by by Sayyid Mohibullah Shah Saab, uh, senior economist. Salaikum, Shah Saab. Salaikum, ji. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, sir. Thank you so much for taking out your time and, and talking to us. Shaza, first of all, tell us that yes. now looking at this current situation as far as the economy is concerned, a lot of issues, very meager economy, feeble uh, approach towards uh, sorting out issues also, to be very honest. Yes. Now, sir, in the near future, say from six to nine months, what sort of an economy do you see, especially post-budget, sir? Do you think do you think things will improve or you think there's going to be I mean more pressure on the government by various other factors your take sir thank you well I think things have to improve because we don't have an option otherwise uh, this program provides us a relief a breathing space in which we need to do the things that you have mentioned and I think we need to do on parallel tracks the two things one, it's, it is fine with the IMF program, 
that we will be reducing the domestic and external imbalances. And uh, hopefully that uh, we will also reduce the impediments to economic growth. But then they, these are the things that we have to do ourselves because if I look back over the years, we have not focused on the production side of the economic equation. Our domestic economy has a tremendous potential, both in agriculture and in, uh, and in industry, but impediments to growth in agriculture or value addition or in, and also in industries lies totally by the wayside. It's been neglected. We just focus on how to, I mean, largely it's, it is an uh, import-driven consumer economy. We have unfortunately been borrowing in order to finance this imported uh, consumption economy. But simultaneously, the second part of the other side of the equation, which is that we must generate indigenous wealth by being more productive economy rather than just a consumption economy. So as you said, in six to nine months or a year, while we get a breathing space, it is up to us. And I think Prime Minister Imran Khan's government is seriously committed from his previous talk and also the way he's approaching. I believe that they would simultaneously do these things. They will not waste these six to nine months or a year. And they must focus. Uh, there, there is tremendous scope by very small investment, by very intermediate technology. No big deal. No imported need of technology or big capital needed. Just to create an investment-friendly environment. And uh, in, in, you see, the, the, the trouble with us has been that the impediments to growth have been institutional. We have not uh, restructure the institutions to support growth. The impediments to growth have also been in terms of policies because we have, we have not done that part of a business and also in terms of poor quality of human resources. Now, IMF program talks who's, about all... Who's watching your program, who's, who's, who can listen to you, what exactly is that supposed to be? Because, sir, I mean, we, we have been talking about this state for a very long time, this trust deficit for a very long time, meager economy, weak economy, no programs, no planning, no vision, nothing for a very long time. All those countries who had some sort of, even India, sir, Dr. Manmohan Singh introduced those economic reforms. Where Look at their economy. I mean, they pick up things. I mean, I was, I was just told the other day, I was reading a, an article that they plan to buy 114 top-of-the-line jets F-21s. Or, or even the Lockheed Martin wants to invest. They have got $18 billion to invest left, right, and center. You know what I'm saying? This is what economy is that all is, about. Whether we criticize true. Narendra Modi or whatever, one Ambani can, you know, he has got true. at <laughs> least think? 10 times more money, one individual, than your total forex, uh, forex reserves. Sir. So true. what are we talking true. about? Over here, okay. there is no planning. There is no vision. I fail to understand what's been going on for the last so many years. I mean... This is the situation. It's, it's kind of a do-or-die situation now for Pakistan. We, we, I mean, we, we, we whatever has been thing. done in the past has been done. But even yeah. for the future planning, I mean, look at the current situation. Let I think this is high time to inform the public that, you know what, this is what is going to happen. This is what we need to do. We need to privatize. We need to understand what IMF is saying, sir. Yeah, that is true. We, we, How we long are we going to lie things, to our But we nation? haven't done them. I mean, you mentioned Manmohan Singh in India, but we should Hello? also record... Hello? Uh, Am I, am I clear? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, sir. Now, you, now you're clear, sir. Okay. What I'm saying is that it's true that India has moved forward. But let's go back. We, we were ahead of India up to 1991. And in terms of better economy, attracting more foreign direct investment than India. But then we moved away. And for instance, in these structural reforms, look at who, which countries have, in India included, but which countries have really done the institutional reforms, which we have been talking about. As you said, we talk about a lot. We don't do anything. But who is stopping us, for instance, to follow the good and successful examples of Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, by integrating the fragmented, fragmented, fragmented institutional framework in terms of production and investment and exports. We have, the will, look, and the, they had a good leadership, 
and those okay. people were ready because we say, oh, you know, see, we gave the plan to the South, uh, you know, these uh, Far Eastern countries. For God's sake, it's the people over here. Forget about the manpower, sir. Uh, forget about the demographics, that young population. They have, don't have any future, to be very honest. I mean, we are just producing MBAs and uh, God knows what and what not, and there is no job available. We, are, we don't even have any plan. Look at your health uh, infrastructure. Look at your um, uh, schooling. For God's sake, I mean... True. And why do we claim? True. I mean, it's True. great to be over ambitious, sir. It's great no, to be okay. to be positive. No, 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 no. It's great this, to be, this, you know, looking forward this, to things. No, but I'm one has to be about, realistic, sir. That I'm is what, what I believe in. Because Re unfortunately, we are not. We have never I'm, been. Uh, I'm talking about a simple institutional framework. Because we are not creating the platform. And these things will happen in this country, too. For instance, what, what was the critical catalyst for, for all of these countries to industrialize the economy, to create jobs, and raise the level of uh, living standards? The most important thing was creating a ministry which combines investment, industry, and exports, the MITI. The MITI in Japan, the MITI in South Korea, the MITI in Malaysia, they were the critical triggers. Who is stopping us to do institutional reforms in Pakistan? Nobody, except we don't even focus on policy reforms. We don't focus on institutional reforms. We just want to throw jobs, create so many fragmented ministries and secretaries so that we have ministers and secretaries and parliaments and whatever. We don't integrate them. You have one piece on investment, another ministry at industries, third ministry in export and commerce. They all fight with each other over the turf battles. Each one is going in a different direction. How, is who is stopping for us? For the benefit of the, Pakistan, sir, this is the fight for the benefit of their own perks. This is for their own leverages, better cars, good houses, you know, more money, more kickbacks. But anyway, sir, since it's a long topic, anyway, thank you very much for your comments. Uh, thank you. Sir, now, uh, coming to you, sir, talking about the pro-poor policies, everybody claims that, you know, we'll be making a budget that is going to help the poor people. But so looking at the inflation, and, and I just ex explain, I mean, you're an economist, sir, please kindly, I'm a student, kindly explain this to me, you know, when you increase your interest rate, that means that you're tightening your monetary policy. Yes. When you're tightening your monetary policy, it means that less loans so that inflation could be controlled, less circulation of the money. Sometimes the State Bank of Pakistan intervenes and uh, picks up, you know. Excess liquidity. Now, sir, when you look at the current situation, look at the dollar and everything, intervention by the State Bank or no intervention by the State Bank, there seems to be a lot of issues created by the bureaucrats, positive and negative. Some believe that, you know, if they'll sign certain projects, I mean, maybe the NAB is going to go after them tomorrow. There are certain which are genuinely corrupt, interestingly. They don't want to, unless central kickbacks are given. And there is a third category, sir, which doesn't even care whether it happens or not. I mean, they're more concerned about their plots in F11, M12. And, you know, this is exactly what the reality is, unfortunately, sir. We are, as a nation, you're increasing. And now the question, back to it, forget about this, because, you know, corruption and this mindset, unfortunately, is, is a very, very killing attribute, I would say. Your increased interest rates, look at the government borrowing, sir. Hardly anything left for the private sector. And even if they get, look at the economic activity, how would they repay? So all these things put together, combined together, and on top, the FBI right there has been assigned certain tasks to squeeze you more, get more money out, no matter what. They're already short on their task. People are resigning, new people are coming in. When you have a problem of that magnitude, sir, things become really difficult, even if they are doable tasks. Do you see anything positive happening in the near future, sir? Sorry for me be a, uh, being a critic, <laughs> but sir, these are the general no, it's, questions it's people good to need be to know. Constructive criticism effectively is always helpful. So while criticizing the economy or the economists are the ones who run the economy or make the government decisions, there is no issue in that. What we need to do is to look forward. On one hand, we have a government budget, which is almost six trillion, slightly more than that. We have a GDP, which is about 30 trillion. Everywhere in the world, each country has a single pie with three components in it. One is the wealth consumer, which is the public, which is represented by public representatives, in our case, assemblies or centers. Correct. 
The second one is the regulator of wealth, which is the government, the executive part of it. The third one is the creator of wealth, which is the corporate world. All those countries where corporate world has expanded because it creates wealth. Absolutely. Has delivered good living standard to the people of that country. And our country just work out on this pie and see the size of the government, the size of the wealth creator, the corporate world, and then the size of the public. This in itself will take you right handhold to bring you to the solutions. I have, at the moment, I am also the CEO of National Productivity Organization. Within three and a half years, I have worked with almost seven secretaries. Mm -hmm. Believe me, all federal secretaries were quite concerned for the improvement of the performance of these public sector entities. However, the secretariat instructions and the systems they are embedded in or we are embedded in mm -hmm. does not allow us to make a decision. Good decision obviously is the best part. Poor decision, if properly implemented, can still work. But indecision is quite injurious to the health of any Absolutely. A wrong decision is better than no decision. Than no decision. Our system, unfortunately, I mean, the, the centuries of time-tested experience of board members is generally put to the wisdom test of a section officer on codal formalities. And it results in indecisiveness. So even the federal secretary, unfortunately, then in spite of his willingness, cannot help the institutions to come up. And secondly, there is also a deficiency of technocrat leadership in the corporate world. The government at the moment, uh, there are almost 411 public sector companies or entities or institutions. Correct. There is a plan to reduce those to most probably 231 or 233 feather. Will Even with this, these are the, this is the number which the, is going to get prioritized? The number where the some institutions are to be merged together, okay. some to be acquisitioned, okay. some to be privatized. All right. So the final plan is to reduce those from 411 to almost 233. And, and how, much, However, how, how much money do you expect after all this exercise? Oh, well, this in itself is not specifically for money, but, but, but for reforms. For reform, because sir, we, you look at the look at the circular debt. For reforms, look at the because money public sector entities Twice in the size of your PSDP yes. is actually being drained into PSEs. To, 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 to these monsters, white elephants. There in Malaysia, 65% of the budget is actually funded by public sector entities. Profitability. See? Yes. In our case, there is almost a trillion rupees injected into these public sector entities per annum. Now, is there an issue in the public sector entities in itself or it does require governance reform? It does require governance reform. Obviously, the size of the state has to be reduced. The size of the private sector has to be expanded. That is what the primary objective of the Public-Private Partnership Act is. But unfortunately, it's the other way around, sir. Sir, if but, you allow me, I, I'll have to take a short break. Sure. After the break, I'll return and we'll continue the uh, discussion right from that point. Because sure. this is something very important. Wherever you've seen decent growth, yes. you will see that the uh, corporate sector or the private sector is expanding. And is obviously then, you know, a lot of other factors. For example, low interest rate, availability of the money, yes. projects, and the conducive environment low energy cost, cost of doing business should be down as well. And at the same time, uh, the public sector interference, interference as well as the overall size is also shrinking. Yes. They're just there to guide and to facilitate the corporate sector or the private sector. Right. But unfortunately, this is not what is happening. Uh, people are scared of certain areas. You know, they, they, they do not want to, to sort of even invest money over there or they're just, you know, there, there's this strategy in the stock market that's called wait and see strategy over here yes. still. It's been, the wait has been too long now, sir, and we are still <laughs> waiting to see what is going to happen. We'll take a break here. After the break, we'll return and we'll continue our discussion. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break. Sir. So, we were discussing about the public sector entities draining money 
here in Pakistan, while in other countries, the same sector is actually adding up to the budget. So there is a need to bring in governance improvement in those, bringing in technocrats leadership within these corporate sector. Sir, what and about the unions in PIA for that matter, yes. or railway, or so many other institutions? Yes. They play such a vital role, such an important, and such a negative role, let me be very yes. clear here, sir. Not for the sake of the, if somebody's not working, he should be thrown out, yes. should be hanged upside down, you know, and who's not letting anybody else work. Rather than union being together to look after the affairs of each other and destroying the institutions and being a parasite on them, what is that supposed to mean? This is what is happening, well, they're so powerful. It, the, the difference between the socialist world or the communist world and the democratic world. Or the capitalist world. Or the capitalist <laughs> world. Or the less as fair in one. Mm -hmm. Why the corporate world over there is so successful? Because it revolts against your productivity. If you are productive, you will be revolted. If you are not productive, you will not be revolted. In our case, there is a continuous rental paid out to public sector entities for their underperformance paid by the taxpayers who are effectively performing efficiently. So when we burden the sector which is efficiently performing in favor of those who are not performing, the end conclusion obviously will be negative capital formation or poor capital formation. And this is what has happened? And that is what is happening in public sector entities here in Pakistan. Number two, when we register a company as a, a public sector entity as a company, Companies Act should only be the law governing that institution. In our case, the Auditor General of Pakistan, for example, needs to build a capacity of his team to audit corporate entities not under the government regulations, but under the Companies Act. And that is what I have actually seen myself, that corporate entities most of the time become indecisive for fear of the audit payers, mm -hmm. which are relevant actually to the government regulations. So that is the reason I'll come back to that pie, that we generally regulate the corporate world with government regulations, although that does require companies act only, SECP right. strength only, chartered accountants audit only, nobody else should audit those. Similarly, the regulator of the wealth at the moment, which is government, its budget is how much? Six trillion? We are trying to manage the whole economy with six trillion budget? That is not a solution. It depends upon the marginal propensity to consume to give additional development budget or PSDP. What we have to do is to manage cutting our on that. private it's the sector. the other way around, yeah? We have to manage the private sector. Give so them PSDP a breathing space. basically increase, increases the capacity of any government to consume and to absorb that budget and to reproduce more. To reproduce. But unfortunately over here, sir, you know, we, we end up hearing that uh, PSDP has been slashed by this Six seventy-five billion this time. Now, this year that is it something is six seventy-five billion and obviously, only. Sir, looking it at should the have been at least a trillion. Now, sir, looking at the current situation, I mean, Iran and US tension, that is going to create a lot of problems if something happens in Iran, sir. Yes. We'll be having another border which is not going to be safe anymore. Looking at the Afghan situation, sir, Forget about the tr last 19, 20 years. Let's start from 1977, even before that. Problem over there as well. Hostile India, buying the weapons left, right and center. And you never know what Narendra Modi is up to. He's a butcher, will remain a butcher. This is his mindset. Yes. Look at the life of poor Muslims out there, sir. Now, uh, when you have got this is all around you, a lot of international... Uh, I would say agencies gearing up together against the CPAC or OBOR or BRI project for that matter. And Chinese do understand that they are expanding and their expansion has to be stopped. Now looking at that and then Pakistani role is also very important because CPAC is one of the biggest in, in the yes. BRI project. That they want to come to this side and let's see how it moves. But sir, looking at the overall situation, neither we are prepared nor we are equipped. Our labor is not at all productive. Uh, corruption you know, getting the job done, cost of doing business, you start talking about the negative things and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. That's not how you grow, sir, because you have missed so many trains earlier. Most probably this is the last train. You cannot afford to miss. But unfortunately, the pace isn't up to the mark, sir. People are not ready and there's a problem. Now, that point towards you, sir, since you, you end up being with so many people, 
uh, from various uh, businesses. You talk about dairy product, you know, we end up hearing we are the sixth largest. You talk about other products produced for that matter, but no valuation, nothing has been done. Now, what is the basic problem with the investors? Are they shy? Are they reluctant? Are there's a lot of trust deficit? Or they are unsure about the future? Insecure in a way? What exactly is going on, sir? You What's know, brewing out there? There is no long-term policy in our country. In, uh, in China, they have 10 years policy, 15 years policy, or other countries. And they are keeping they're, they're, the alignment. They're, yeah. They're keeping the align alignments. And, and, and they, are, they, uh, they are bringing for foreign direct uh, investment through uh, tr uh, trust. Uh, without uh, trust, uh, no one can come to Pakistan. So in local investors are also uh, very much shaky, you can say, because the dollar is going up because and uh, gold is going up and other things. They are putting their money in terms of dollar or in terms of gold, or they are not going to uh, use banks, they are using lockers. They are not, they are not bringing their money out because, the tr because of trust deficit. The, but this is the main one thing we are, everybody is facing in this country. First, we have to build a trust between local investor, then uh, international investor can easily come to Pakistan. This is the main thing. This is the uh, core thing I can say. And the incentives given to the foreign investors, don't you think this is, this is a little too much as compared to the domestic investor? I mean, your, your local investor should be also facilitated on the same lines. Yes. Why to discriminate that a person who is paying taxes and everything he's, he's been doing, is not facilitated, whereas somebody who's been making money left, right, and center is a corrupt man who's yes. got a few hundred million dollars abroad through these stupid immensity yes. schemes, I would say. He can bring the money back, convert it into white, and you know, he's good to go. When, when, when you announce a uh, MST scheme, what is the, wh wh how, you know, you can say uh, those who are paying taxes, they are paying 35% tax, and other is paying 5% after three years or four years. What is the fault? Who is paying taxes? Exactly. Yes. So uh, th th there should be no MST in Pakistan because the, the, I, I think this should be the last uh, MST scheme and they should be punished after that because when they will not do this thing, uh, our parallel economy will grow uh, likewise. Sir, your parallel economy is believed to be bigger than the size of your GDP, yes. sir. Is that a correct yes, statement? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the correct. GDP, is, some people say it's around $320 billion. Right, sir? Yes. If it is $320 billion for that matter, you it's talk about a similar that. or maybe more. Yes, because you talk about smuggling, you talk about people who have got money. Forget about the lockers in their houses. Yes. I mean, a lot of billionaires, I mean, they've got gold, I think, into dozens and dozens of kgs in their yes, houses. Yes. They've got cash, like, you know, f just imagine one single secretary from a very poor province, that is Balochistan. I mean, one of his kickback was around... 80, yes. 90 crore rupees. Yes. They had to bring in machines to count the money. Just imagine. Yes. This is just one. Forget about the rest. I fail to understand that according to this uh, scheme, I mean, when you talk about uh, distributing money to various provinces, their share has increased and uh, NFC walls I'm yes. talking about over here. So now you look at the amount of money that has been distributed to people uh, who were ruling Balochistan, whether in the PPP's government or in Nawaz Sharif's government, even yes. now, even now, there's no difference. Same people, different faces. Yes. If the cousin isn't there, the other cousin will become the MNA or MP or for that matter, speaker or national assemblies, whatever, and they end up getting the money. Same Look people are coming, but their faces are changed. Faces, same, same, yes. same intention, same everything. Why not, sir? The point is that, you know, this is what you call democracy. Yes. So either there should be proper democracy or there should be no democracy. Because this half democracy is the mother of all the problems, in, unfortunately. Yes, yes. Now, so a couple of more po important points. Quick comment. Now, the government says that the next two years will be very tight. Yes. And because of this situation, sir. But do you think these people have a plan? Because I remember when Hafiz Sheikh Saab was uh, also the Minister for Finance in PPP's government, I asked him this question and he told me, well, we have, we have identified 700,000 new potential taxpayers. They are still not the taxpayers. So I fail to understand after 10 years what exactly is going to do. Sir, the fact is that at the moment we are obviously in the inverse direction. And good economy is economic growth positive, inflation reducing means negative, downwards. unemployment negative, downwards. 
that's in there should be an economy we are at the moment keeping in the imf forecast the world bank and then the adb reducing the economic growth rate to now even 2.7 percent and you never know it, it will end up under 2.5 under 2 percent yes inflation increasing it's already in double digits yes Though the claim is 8.8, but increasing. Yeah. However, now the next coming to Europe. Where point. do you see this interest rate going, sir? It's 10.75. I be I believe it further up. No, yes. no, there is a reason why I would say no further up. The IMF plan. I sever, by the no, way. The IMF plan of 39 months for 6 billion dollar, effectively is to reduce consumption, overall consumption in the country. Mm -hmm. So there are two kinds of economic policies, expansionary policy and contractionary policy. Mm -hmm. A guy, IMF at the moment, since we were not doing our work, as uh, Jake Welch once said, change before you have to. So now we, are, we have to change because we did not change ourselves earlier. So the overall demand will contract due to the IMF policies. So accordingly, when the demand already starts contracting, mm -hmm. the monetary policy might not need further tightening. All right. All right. Okay. So that is sort on that part. But on another section, I will tell you the rosy picture. Huh. For the government, the advice is... Do we is, even have a rosy no. picture, sir? Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just give it that to you. But on the government side, we have to come out of the blank game and we should concentrate on the charter of the economy mm -hmm. and we should all come together to resolve these economic issues the way we resolved the FATA seats in the assemblies. I mean, I, that was a great, I think, task. I think... That, so, is, that is a positive sign. Right. Now, the next thing is why the, the rosy picture. Back in 60s, we were well. In 70s, we were not so well. So, very briefly, we have gone through two different, rather three wars, and half of the Pakistan, the East Pakistan. We part. lost. Therefore, we had redirected our resources towards nuclear development and towards carrying capacity. Alhamdulillah, touch wood. That has now already because there was been a lot of will. There was consistency. Yes. So you achieved a very difficult task. Look yes. at Iran. So what sort therefore, of we will through? now yeah. achieve the next task, task of economic development, inshallah, by concentrating our thought process. But in the, I, th I think you know, if there is a will, there is a way. Yes. Last closing comment yes. from you, sir. Check up. So we are very hopeful f from this government that they will do something for uh, their people and they will do better f from previous government. They'll do better because you know they have at least the top leadership. One man, it's a one man show basically, yes. sir. The man might not be capable, I will say he's yes. not an economist or anything. But he's not corrupt. But at least yes. he's not yes. corrupt. Yes. Because this corruption yes. is the actual yes. menace, sir, yes. which we have to get rid of. Anyway, Sheikh Saab, thank, thank you very you. much. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank and that's you. all we have for this. Sir. I'll see you inshallah. Again, till then, you take good care of yourself. Good afternoon.